Hello class, uh, today I want to go over what we did in class today in the event that you missed our lesson. I only plan on this being a few minutes long. Um, what we did in class was we reviewed our graphs of secant and cosecant from last night. We talked about the geometry um, answers for our um, geometry pretest that we did last week. We're having a test on that. Um, later this week on Thursday and we'll be graphing the secant transform functions and the cosecant transform functions as well as what we do today with graphing tangent and cotangent. So moving to the issue of graphing tangent and cotangent I just want to remind you about the quadrantal uh, table that we did for sine, cosine, and tangent. As I fill it in you should remember that the sine function always starts at the midline and follows the progression of 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and 0, and cosine follows the progression starting at the maximum, uh, going to 0, negative 1, 0, and 1, and tangent uh, follows because tangent is equal to the sine ratio divided by the cosine ratio from our identity section. Uh, the tangent ratio would be equal to 0 divided by 1, which is 0. And then for pi over 2, tangent would be undefined because you cannot divide by 0. And that's represented on a graph by a vertical asymptote. In this case, it's 0 for 0 divided by negative 1. Here it's undefined. Again, undefined shows up on the graph or is represented by a vertical asymptote. And again, at 2 pi, you have a um, value of 0. Hopefully, you notice the function has a cycle to it. It varies at these quadrantal values from 0 to an asymptote to 0 to an asymptote and so on. What we're going to do is we're going to graph the tangent function at these quadrantal values and then talk about what the values are in between. So we have a value, I'm just going to mark out the tick marks And I'm going to mark out the tick marks in the negative uh, on the negative x-axis. So, looking at our table from up above, our um, when we're at zero, our tangent is at zero, and then at pi over two, we have an asymptote, and then we have a zero, and then we have an asymptote and then we are at zero again and as we go to the other direction we have an asymptote, a zero, and an asymptote. We then explored today what the tangent of the value in between would be. The, the radian would be pi over four radians. We discussed and reminded people that when we had tangent of pi over four that was equal to one. We looked at what a 45-45-90 triangle has for a tangent ratio just to justify this. And the tangent value would be opposite over adjacent, which would be 1 over 1. So what we do at pi over 4 is we plot the 1 value. But then when we look at the tangent of negative pi over 4, that would be the same as a value in the fourth quadrant and in the fourth quadrant the tangent ratio is negative one. So we would just put the values at one and negative one and now we just draw the function. And this is how we drew it in class. We gave it this curvature. We noticed it was periodic in nature so it's going to follow the same pattern. And over here we have the same pattern continuing. So, some observations that we made once we drew this graph. We observed that it was periodic, but th in this case, uh, the period of this function is only equal to pi radians. We also notice that the function is always increasing. If you, look, if you look at the function from left to right, you'll see that the function is always heading upward.
so it's a increasing function and we also notice that we have a f we have at um, at n pi over 2 when x is equal to n pi over 2 if n is even we have a 0 and if n is odd then you are at an asymptote so so again just to sum up some of the properties of the tangent function the period or the amount of time or the distance in the x direction you need for to go through a full cycle is pi radians and that can be seen as the distance between asymptotes uh, the zeros are located at um, intervals of n pi over 2 as long as n is even and the vertical asymptote locations are at x equals n pi over 2 um, when n is odd and the function is always increasing so now uh, after we worked on this in class we discussed the cot cotangent function the, cotan the first thing we did was we discussed how the cotangent of function is equal to 1 over the tangent function. As such, a lot of the properties of the tangent function are switched. For instance, the uh, zeros switch with the asymptotes. So the zeros are now at locations of x equaling n pi over 2. where n is odd and the asymptotes are at locations x equals n pi over 2 where n is even. Another property that has switched is cotangent, unlike tangent, cotangent is always decreasing. So with that in mind we're going to draw the function so over on this graph I'm going to label my increments and I'm going to put my asymptotes where I have um, even intervals of n pi over 2. This one here would count as 2 pi over 2, simplifying to give you pi. And then here I have another asymptote n pi over 2, where you have even an even n value. And then I have my zeros at the odd values of n pi over 2. And since the function is always decreasing, it follows the following shape. Again, let me just reiterate, the zeros became asymptotes when you uh, compare tangent to cotangent. Uh, or, well, let me just reemphasize, for cotangent of x, the following properties are true. The zeros are located at n pi over 2 where n is an odd integer and the vertical asymptotes are located at x equals n pi over 2 
where n is even. That's all I have for you for today. That's a quick review of what we did in class, and I hope that uh, you have found this to be helpful. Make sure you study this tonight. Tomorrow we'll be having a quick quiz on this, and um, we'll see you then. Take care.